Hey, hey everyone, Felix from Nintendo Life here, and today it is time to look at the very best couch cop games on the Nintendo Switch. The Switch is an amazing console designed to be able to play at least two people just right out of the get-go, share a Joy-Con and then bada bing bada boom, you could be playing together or against each other. But in this video you won't see any games where you compete against each other. Also, every game on this list will have come out on Switch after February 4th, 2019, because on that day, Sion posted a video just like this one, but that is five years ago, and so many Couch Cobb games have come out since then, so I thought it was time for a little refresh with some of the new games. We'll have 16 of them to talk about today. There's everything from two player games, four player games, and even one where you can play six people together, cooperatively that is. Of course, there might be some games that are missing from this list, and if there is, well, let us know down in the comments below so that everyone watching can go down there and get even more game recommendations for their couch co-op game sessions. All right then, let's get right into it. We're starting out with all the two-player couch co-op games, and what better way to start it off with than with one of my favorite games of all time, Cuphead. Now, Cuphead is also a single-player game, but in my opinion, it really shines with two people. If you don't know what this game is, it's a run-and-gun shooter where you defeat tough bosses together in this 1930s cartoon art style. Everything is drawn in hand, and it just oozes with charm. Every boss fight feels very different, they all have different faces, which are really gonna challenge you to the max, but there's nothing more satisfying than after a lot of hours finally taking down a tough enemy. I think the reason why I enjoy co-op more than single player for Cuphead is the fact that you can revive each other, so no matter how many times the other player dies, you can always go over and revive them. Now keep in mind that each time they die, they will go upwards faster, so it's going to be harder and harder to revive, but especially if you're playing with someone who's maybe a bit less skilled at the game, you can help them along and then you both just have a blast. The next one is a two-player only game, is regarded as one of the best couch co-op games ever to be released, and it's It Takes Two. This game is a game that just brings up new ideas all the time. There's always new gameplay mechanics and new areas to jump around in. You're never gonna feel bored, I can guarantee you that. The story is of this married couple who are getting a divorce and they have a little child, and suddenly they get transformed into these two small figures, so it may just be in a regular house, but everything is huge because you're so small. If you're looking for a couch co-op game that maybe isn't as hard as Cuphead, it takes two, well, it doesn't get any better. It doesn't have a too long length, the story is sweet, funny, and also sad, and at the end you might actually feel like you've learned something about cooperation with another. And I mean it, seriously don't sleep on this game, it is really a fantastic experience. It's one of the best story driven games I've ever played and the gameplay is just so fun the entire way through. It made me tear up a couple of times and uh, yeah that's just a testament to how good this game is. Now, it must be said that the performance on the Switch version is unfortunately not the greatest but it is still very playable and you still will experience this amazing story and gameplay, so uh, yeah, definitely don't write it off. Yeah. Yeah. Ha ha, that's Luigi's Mansion 3! Yes, Luigi, and you can play two people in that game if only one of you wants to be Luigi, because the other one will be Gooigi. Gooigi has some fun little quirks, for example, you can go through bars where Luigi can't access, but you're also vulnerable to water, you'll just dissolve goo and water. <laughs> You're trying to find Mario, Peach and Toad, and on your journey to do that, you'll explore this giant haunted hotel with loads of ghosts and bosses to defeat. It does take a while to unlock Guiji though, it doesn't take loads of time, but it took me 30 to 45 minutes to get access to it, and I was blasting through it, I was skipping every cutscene, so it might take a little bit more than that. It's just good to know because if you sit down with a friend and think, okay, now we're gonna play two player, and then for the first while you only play one person, and you think, wait, wait, where's the co-op feature? It does come a bit later, but once it does, you'll need to cooperate to overcome the puzzles and the big baddies. Yeah. Yeah. Next up, we have Captain Toad Treasure Tracker. Have you ever wanted to play a game where you can't jump? Well, if that's the case, then this game is just for you. Captain Toad has a giant backpack which makes him unable to jump, so you're trying to complete these puzzles without doing one of the most common things in video games. 
It's a really cool twist and they've made some really interesting puzzles around this mechanic. And of course, you can play this two people together. Sure, the game is built for single player first and the second player was added in an update later, but I actually enjoyed playing together with someone more than when playing alone because then you're trying to figure out these puzzles together. Oh, what's over there? Take a look. If you go here, I'll go there and, and then we'll figure out all the secrets together. You know, that sort of stuff. The only real issue is that both players can control the camera, which is a bit frustrating if you're trying to figure out something and then the other player moves the camera, but this also just adds a bit more to the communication. You can just ask, hey, is it okay I move the camera? Or you just have one player who controls the camera at all times. It's totally manageable. You just have to figure out what works best for you. Did I hear anyone say WarioWare? Uh, no, Wario, but now that you said it, well, why don't we talk about WarioWare Move It? Because it's an excellent two-player couch co-op game. Now, it does have a mode where you can play four people together, but there you're battling it out against each other. But in story mode, you can play it either single player and two player. And two player, let me tell you, my god, is it fun. WarioWare is a game with loads of fast paced, really random and weird mini games, and it's so freaking funny. I find myself laughing all the time at the wild gags that are happening on screen. So how it works two players is that sometimes it's just one player at a time, so player one does a mini game and then player two does one, but they also have mini games that are designed for two players. You can only play with Joy-Cons in this one, but they utilize them in really fun ways. They use the little sensor that almost no game uses, and you have to have the wrist straps on because sometimes you need to drop the Joy-Con as part of the minigames. Each minigame is associated with a pose, and there's loads of these poses. For example, they say knight, and you stand like a knight and do a little minigame. I think personally, it's genius, and I'm just thinking, man, why haven't I jumped on the WarioWare train sooner? I've played a bit of smooth moves on the Wii, but here is where I really saw the light with WarioWare. And if you can't get enough of WarioWare, there's another WarioWare game on Switch called WarioWare Get It Together. It's a bit different than this one. You choose a character and then that character plays differently in the mini games, but it's still good fun. Coming right up, we have Untitled Goose Game, or if you play two players together, it's called Untitled Geese Game. Look, it's even in the title. That's really, really cool. So in this game, you play as these two geese who are trying to create chaos. You pick up items, you mess with the gardener, you swim around and you honk a lot because there's a dedicated button to it. It's absolutely amazing. Personally, my very thing is the art style of this game. It's really simple, but I love the color scheme that they've used here. And it's there's not a lot of shading going on. Yeah, it, my mind is very pleased when it looks at this. The gameplay is also really fun. You have these weird tasks. So maybe you have to take the rake into the lake or you have to make a picnic. So take all these different things from this garden and take it all the way over to the picnic blanket. It's just so original and funny. And the fact that you can play two people together is just so nice because it's one of those games that you want to experience with someone else. Yeah, you're gonna hear this a lot if you pick it up. Next up, we have a game I'm playing right now, and it's Stardew Valley. Stardew Valley is, in my opinion, the best farming game. There's so much to do. Go in the mines, tend to your crops, build a barn so you can have some cows, go into the little village and interact with the NPCs. Every day I'm waking up with my little brother, it's always like, okay, I need to do this, you need to do that. And in the end, there was so much that didn't get done because we just got distracted doing other stuff. and. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about if you've played the game. It's super addicting. Now, I'm playing it online with my little brother, but we're talking about couch co-op games. And this game does have a split screen option, which is just really, really nice. Because when I played it originally on Switch, this feature, no, 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 it wasn't there. So we had to buy a copy on my Switch, on my wife's Switch. But people starting out now only need one Switch and they can just start up the farm and experience magic. So, you played the first Portal game and you had a blast, but something was missing. You wanted to experience this with another person. So, that's where Portal 2 comes around with its two-player campaign. Now, you have four portals to play around with, two for each player. And it's genuinely 
amazing how much more it adds to the experience. You have to really communicate between each other to make this work. And if one player does all the work, then the game will literally roast the other player for not doing enough. This happened when I was playing with my wife and it was absolutely hilarious because I was putting all the portals around and saying, hey, put this over here, put this over here. And then the game was constantly, you know, praising me, but also just roasting my wife. So she actually didn't end up liking this game. She was like, nope, I don't want to do this, which I can understand. If a game was just roasting me all the time, I probably wouldn't like it so much. I don't know if it does it for everyone. If it was just random that it picked her, um, I don't really need to tell you what portal is. You create portals and then you can go through them and there's all kinds of cool puzzles and just getting to play around with these portals, jump through them. You might have a hard time figuring out the solutions with these portals in the start, but once it clicks, it really clicks and man, is it magical. Part-time UFO is a game where you pick up stuff with a claw. And this can be everything from oranges to fish to cheerleaders. And you also get to play this two players. So you can get a second UFO along so you can try and cooperate and figure out, okay, if you take that thing, then I'll take this one. And together we'll get all the badges because the badges are like special challenges within the levels and you use these badges to actually proceed and get more levels. I actually tried this game out because Sion wouldn't stop talking about it and I was a bit put off by, well, I don't know, it just didn't look as fun initially, but then I tried it out and was just immediately hooked. Haha, <laughs> get it? Either way, it just has such a fantastic art style and gameplay direction. The controls feel really good and it's genuinely challenging to get everything exactly where you want it to. And that's what makes it fun. It was one of those games that even if you failed, you were just laughing because it was so stupid how you failed. For example, here, I was trying to get this cheerleader on top, but I accidentally knocked it over after my wife had spent ages getting that cheerleader on top. Yeah, it's wonderful. So get another person along and then take some jobs as these tiny UFOs. Trust me, you're going to have a brilliant time. Yeah. And going from one HAL Labs game to the other, we have Kirby and the Forgotten Land. This was the first time Kirby was diving into the 3D realm of platformers, and man, what a spectacular way of doing so. This game is absolutely amazing, it's really pretty, loads of power-ups to play as, and you can play it two people together. Now it must be said that the second player only gets to play as Bandana Waddle D, so they don't get to use all the cool power-ups, which it's a real shame, but I found that this game works really well when playing maybe with someone who's a bit more inexperienced to the game because then they can play as Kirby and I'll just play as Bandana Wildly and help them along as best as I can. But if you do want a Kirby game where you can play all as Kirby, then you should look at Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe. You can either all play as different characters, Kirby, King DDD, Meta Knight and Bandana Waddledee, but you can also all choose to play as Kirby and use all the wacky abilities that you might have at your disposal. Personally, I haven't played this one yet. I've heard really good things about it, and that's why I mention it here in this video. And also just because it's cool to have a Kirby game where it's not only two player co-op, but four player couch co-op. And that's a perfect segue into the next selection of games because all of these games you can play with up to four players. Local couch corpy. That is not a word. Yeah. Yeah. And what better way to start off with than with Vampire Survivors. Vampire Survivors is a brilliant game playing one player, two player, three player and four player because the way it scales how many items and power ups you can have. The more players you get, the less power-ups you have, so you can't be as overpowered, but instead, they're all spread out across all the players, so you all get to have a little bit of fun. And the game is super easy to teach to newcomers because you literally only walk around with your joystick. You do sometimes have to choose the item that you want to have, but the items and weapons fire automatically, so you just have to walk around and not get hit by the enemies. You might be a bit put off by the art style, but don't worry. Soon you're gonna completely forget all about it because the gameplay is incredibly addicting. And it's so fun when you all get so overpowered that you can just walk around on the map and hundreds of enemies come at you, but they can't get close enough because all of your automatic weapons hold them at bay. And going from one hectic game to another very hectic game, we have Overcooked All You Can Eat. 
This is a collection of the first and second Overcooked game. And let me tell you, if you want a game where you don't scream at each other, then this game is just not for you because you're going to be yelling at each other and it is incredibly fun. You take control of these little chefs and then you have to coordinate who does what. You're trying to serve orders before the time limit runs out, but these stages will have fun gimmicks that will challenge how you make your food. You'll get new recipes the further you get into the story, and these become more and more challenging the further you get. And the stages also become more weirder and wackier. You might find yourself gliding around on ice or up in a high air balloon, and if you fall off, well, you have to wait a couple of seconds before you respawn. You really have to work out a strategy for this to work, so one person takes the dishes, another one cuts the vegetables, the third player cooks the rice, and the fourth player takes the dishes. Wait, I already said that. But once you get into that flow and everything works, man, there's nothing quite like it. Then someone messes up and you're all just screaming at that person and they're just like, oh no, I'm sorry. Oh, it's great fun. But if you want something a little bit less hectic, then the next game will be more your cup of tea. In Disney Illusion Island, you play as Mickey, Minnie, Donald, and Goofy, and you've all been tricked. You thought you were going to a nice picnic, but instead, you're going to be helping out the local folks on this island. It's a Metroidvania, but a very welcoming one. Kind of like your first Metroidvania, if that makes sense. Maybe you want to play with a family member or a loved one who haven't played a Metroidvania, then this is a very good introduction. It's not a very hard game, but it's really satisfying how you all get these new power-ups and each character have unique animations for double jump or for a slingshot, that kind of stuff. And it works really well with more people playing. I mean, sure, it's fun to do alone, but it's even more fun to be multiple people defeating the enemies and figuring out how on earth we get up to that platform. Personally, the time I had with Disney Illusion Island was really great. The animations are wonderful and the gameplay is really solid. So check out this game if it sounds like something for you and three other pals. Yeah. Next up, we have a game I discovered fairly recently, and it's become one of my all-time favorite couch co-op games. It's Towerfall. Now, Towerfall normally is a game where you compete against each other, and that is really, really fun, but it does also have a single-player campaign where you compete with each other against a horde of enemies. Here there are two modes. One of the modes you can only play two people together and the other you can play up to four people. They are a bit different in how the levels are structured but the main premise is defeat the enemies and don't shoot each other because there is friendly fire. And how do you defeat these monsters? Well, with your trusty bow and arrow. But do be wary because you only have a limited amount of arrows, so you have to go around on the map and collect them once you've shot them. You can jump on the walls, you can dash, and if you haven't already noticed by the art style, this game was made by the same team that made Celeste. So you know, that's a really good sign. This was actually a game that came out before Celeste, and you can really see what parts they brought over from this game. It's fast, it's fun, it's... Towerfall. And last on the list of couch co-op games where you can play up to four people together, we have Super Mario 3D World. This game is fun in single player, but even more fun with more people. You all play as a different character, so Mario, Luigi, Toad, and Peach, and they all have different attributes, so Luigi can jump high and Toad is really fast, and Peach can float a bit in the air. The level designs are big and wide, so you don't feel too cramped when playing with other players. And it's just a really good game. The power-ups are really fun and wacky. You have this cherry, which when you touch it, you duplicate into two characters and control them at the same time. Yeah, it's stuff like that that makes this game really, really nice. Oh, and the game also has a different game in it called Bowser's Fury, but here you can only play two players couch co-op. One player plays as Mario and the other plays as Bowser Jr. And Bowser Jr. is more like a companion of sorts. I've only played that one single player, but I do know the option for two people is there. So now you know, and we can move on to the next game on the list. Yeah. And lastly, we have a couch co-op game where you can play up to six people together. Yeah, it's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Shredder's Revenge. This is an old school beat em ups with lovely pixel art style and lovely combat. Now, I haven't played this up to six people together, but the option is there and I've heard that it's really fun if you can get that many people together for a session. The most I've played is four people and let me tell you, it was incredible to just 
beat out all the baddies together. If someone gets knocked down, you can go over and wave some pizza in front of them. So yeah, if you're six people who are looking for a game where you don't fight against each other like Smash Bros, then Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle is the best for getting to bond together as a big group of people. And there you have it. Those were the very best couch co-op experiences on the Nintendo Switch. If you like this video, why don't you call over a friend and then you can both click that subscribe button in unison. And don't forget to check out our website nintendolove.com for all sorts of Nintendo related content. Stay safe, play some couch co-op games and we'll see you in the next one. Felix from Nintendo Life, out. Oh,